so to speak. Uh, we could talk about this idea of repression, uh, self-identity, awareness, mindfulness, um, into where you are, I mean, you know, as an identity. In this last year, as much as I like to whine about my life, uh, Kane, you've been on an adventure, uh, on a very interesting path. I mean, how much of this is all in a synergy and works together, you think, as a narrative, or how much of it has been a, a sudden change for you um, within your gender transformation, within the TDA, with, you know, this last, let's say, five, seven years? Uh, is this something that's been building up to this point, or is this something where there was a breaking point and all of a sudden everything flipped on its head and now you're kind of spiraling in space? So, like, how, how do you feel right now about that in reflection? I was just imagining myself spiraling in space um, <laughs> with like no tether and just like spinning off into like the unknown. Um, it definitely feels like that sometimes. I, um, it has definitely been this uh, building up where starting Kokedama has like got me, um, you know, sort of to step away from this is how you're supposed to live your life to experience the moment that you're in and like understanding that actually this is life, this moment and even with us having this conversation, like this moment right now, this is life. It's not what we're planning to do tonight or, um, you know, sort of next year, it's right now. And really we might not make it to tomorrow or next year. So it's right now. Um, but sort of that transition from corporate to like, working on like uh working on my kogedama business part-time um like that was a big pay cut you know making the medium bucks as a you know software development consultant um it's a pretty good money like we never if we wanted to buy something we could mostly buy it if it wasn't you know ten thousand dollars right and even then it was like we might be able to make this work um to you know basically cutting that in half because you know going part-time and then eventually going full-time and having um let's just say on on the, the lower end of the income spectrum and it makes it made me question um yeah, who am i if i am not this person who society told me that I had to be, um, go to school, get a job, buy stuff, um, and like procreate, you know? Like if I'm not that, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna do that corporate thing. Um, I, I wanna follow this artistic path and, and I think I can still, um, I, I think I can still do okay and like be able to eat and have a roof over my head. Um, well then who am I? If my career doesn't define me, if my possessions do not define me, then, then who am I? And I, I really think that that led to, I mean, sort of, you know, as a journey led me to um, understand all the things about myself that I was repressing when you're no longer following this, um, you know, highway that society says, um, this is the recipe for your life. This is who you need to be. This is the way you're supposed to be. And you're, you're going to be, uh, you know, in quotes, happy if you follow this, um, to, who am I? Why am I? Why do I do the things that I do? Um, and are the things that I'm doing like are those just habits? Are those things that people have told me to do, or are they things that 
I want to do? Are they things that I need? And it led me on this path of discovery where um, there was there was an aha moment where I realized uh, in the shower that um, that I am transgender. <laughs>